Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Wednesday, October 4th, 2017. We have the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Thank you. Um, then now we have uh, previous minutes uh, to review. The, it's July 26, August 9th, and September 19th. Do you want a motion individually, or do you want? To I more? I think if you, you've all read them, then we can do it all together. I make a motion to approve the minutes of July 26, August 9th, and September 19th. Second. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Key, for um, it was really that was very, it's nice, very minutes. nice minutes. Very complete. Um, select board comments. So I've got a couple of things. I just wanted to go. I just wanted to go over. Um, I had the opportunity to go to the MMA uh, legislative breakfast in Northampton on Friday, September 22nd. It was good to uh, meet. Uh, selectmen, finance um, representatives, you know, um, Steve Kulik was there. Um, so just to give a give an update, and MMA was there to give an update on legislative priorities and what they're thinking for the year um, or next session, fall session. A um, couple of the things they highlighted um, for the priorities for the legislative uh, session were uh, housing and zoning, you know, like Airbnbs, that's been a, a pretty pretty big. I know Furcog's doing having a meeting coming up on that as well. Um, sh uh, short term rentals, uh, Chapter ninety um, funding, um, healthcare cost containment is big. I saw an article in the paper as well that they're they're working on um, ways to kind of cap some of the cost uh, of healthcare, which is obviously is a huge huge issue. Um, one of the interesting things they were talking about that that we on the um, SCEMS Board of Oversight are, are looking at is mobile integration health or mobile integrated health uh, wellness checks. Um, that's kind of where we're hoping to go again with, with SCEMS, um, South County uh, EMS, um, is to kind of hopefully once we're in a building and kind of get everything set, uh, we'd love to kind of push that out. Um, there are actually companies that are looking to, you know, uh, offer these services to town. So um, people recognize it's a, it's a huge value, and if we can keep people out of the hospitals out of the uh, emergency rooms even if we can just keep checks on people um, you know when they come out of the hospital instead of having them get an infection and go back anything we can do to contain cost uh, illnesses and and get back to um, keeping people out of the hospital would would save a ton of money that's most of where the health care is spent you know that's a lovely idea and and uh, you know of course we have Lisa White as our town nurse so she does um, a wonderful job she's of that. wonderful job so maybe we can sort out some kind of program exactly um, we can find out what the model is that they use or the services that they're doing and then we can model that with absolutely. our own staff which yep. would be absolutely wonderful yeah um, we should put that on the agenda for the next SCEMS meeting yeah um, so that we can be thinking about it and yep. and have some ideas uh, maybe invite Lisa to come yeah okay um, so great. we should we should reach out and get that because that I mean, we had been talking about that for a while. Yes. I mean, we had been talking about outreach and checking on our vulnerable population. And, I mean, Triad has a pretty good handle on it, but mm -hmm. it would be nice if we had more of a personal touch. And, yeah. And uh, certainly that was one of the things that I've always was pushing. I know. I remember uh, talking about or that thinking early on. About. So, yep. um, so very exciting to think about moving into our new building, and um, that would be one of the things that would hopefully be a benefit. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely, we'll be all organized. Yep. So um, a couple of the other issues that they're looking at, and um, key issues were um, a recreational marijuana. Obviously, we um, that was one other thing I was going to touch on. With we had our, our Franklin County Selectman Associations meeting at Magic Wings last Thursday, and we had a really good turnout. About 40 different people there. We had uh, one of the newly um, appointed commissioners, Jennifer Flanagan, was there uh, to talk about um, what she sees, and they're writing the regulations on that um, and how it affects towns and 
you know, they're really just getting started, so she didn't have a lot to add. But um, uh, there was a gentleman from MMA there who was very involved with it since, I think, medical marijuana. So, so it, was, it, was, it was a really good meeting. Um, the, a couple of other things were public records law came up, Wendy. So um, I know we had a, some, some of your colleagues were, were voicing uh, the public, you know, just your stance the on that. Amendment. I think Casey, yeah. Casey was talking yes. a, few, a few items yeah. there about... I rev them up. Yes, yes, I could, I could sense that. When I'm she all spoke for public up. knowledge of what's absolutely, going on. <laughs> absolutely, but it definitely gets abused in some areas. So, um, and then they, they went over the 2018 ballot questions, which were numerous that were approved, but obviously they won't all make it um, there. But there were sales tax um, going from 6.25 to 5, um, and I think that's the one that the retail association is getting behind. But that would lose about a billion dollars to the state. So. We, you know, that, that's a huge issue if that happens because that all rolls downhill. Um, the millionaires tax um, that would increase about two billion. So if one, if they both pass, you, know, you wind up with less of an increase, and or we'll see how it goes. Um, minimum wage, uh, insurance for family medical leave act, referendum on gender discrimination. So those are those are kind of the highlights of that meeting, and that's um, that's what I've got. Did you have some things you wanted to say? Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, talk to you uh, to let you know that I've been working on some new sewer rates. Um, now that we have the two management areas, um, I've been working up with a couple different concepts, and uh, I hope not by our next meeting, but and within a month from now, I'll be able to bring it to the board, you know, my recommendations, and, and talk to you about, you know, where how our last change worked out and how these... Um, will impact, you know, going forward. Um, I listened to some of the concerns of some of the residents that were mm -hmm. upset with it last last time, and I think that I've been able to tweak that to satisfy some of their concerns and you know, going forward. Yeah, but it's not, it's, you know, I don't want to, it's not going to go down any, but I think, you know, uh, some one of the concerns from a couple of people were that they were, um, I'll say, minimal users, and they felt that they were paying a higher rate because we had um, a minimum use on there and I've found or I think I've come up with a good way to change that so you know it w might save a few people some money and it probably is the uh, I don't know if I want to say the most impacted but you know the the people who don't use a lot of water and have a hard time paying a lot of their bills right. it would probably benefit them single elderly yep. Yeah, yep. absolutely. I, I think Can I just ask a favor? Could sure. you forward whatever you have to me? Because I am working with a graduate student who I'm also having help look at our structures on things. And Great. Just, you know, just share it that, to integrate it into what she's working on. I'm trying to make it clearer so, more, mm -hmm. so it's more clear to everybody how, it, how we do this. Because, frankly, it's not clear to me. Right. So well, I'm, I'm seeking that in, in the documents I've seen. So Well, um, after reading... A couple of different sewer study rates, you know, from these mm -hmm. people that we spend a lot of it can make your head spin. Right. And and I think what we did, it was plain and simple. We needed to raise a certain amount of money. We had so many people, and we just divided out, and we came up with a rate per per cost right. of uh, gallonage. Right. You Use know. one of the and options that Prickett had. Right. And that, uh, I mean, and that's what the town had been right. using, and it's really simple, and everybody can understand it, and it. And it didn't put a big burden on the office staff. You know, it was really easy for them to do. And as it all turned out, we ended up being able to, you know, uh, manage the sewer uh, system and still have a little money left over to pay for other things going forward. And that, that was our whole intent. That was the goal. Not to really build a bank account, but to be able to pay for the service and put money for the necessary repairs that we know are, are facing us. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, and that's, that's worked out well. Great. Wait, and just to comment on that, we've been operating it as a sort of quasi-enterprise fund, but mm -hmm. Brenda and I have talked about making it an official enterprise fund and going forward mm -hmm. so you can really cover those costs. I think right. it would be worthwhile going over the and pros and cons them. of an enterprise fund again. I mean, we did that for the EMS, but... I'm sorry, um, I didn't catch the beginning of what you... Oh, I think it would be good to go over the pros and cons of an enterprise fund again so that we can, um, you know, as a group move forward, you know, because we've we got to talk with the finance committee. I mean, there's a lot of people involved, mm -hmm. so 
If we well, talk people about have assumed why. we have one. No. And we, we operate know. that way. And it's but, you sort know, of, the auditors similar. know and DOR yeah. knows, but we really need to set it up. You right. Know, but properly. there was, but there are pros and cons. And so it would be good to have everybody on the same page again so that we can move, make sure that we do that. Because that's a town, that's a town well, below. Ask Brenda to bring that, but finance committee. Yeah. I think they're on great. board with this. So oh, um, yeah. I think they are too. But yeah. I think it would be helpful again so people understand the pros and cons because one of the things is is once you set the budget, you can't come back and you know. I mean, there are some limits to what you can do with the enterprise mm -hmm. fund, and and so we need to talk about that so everyone's on the same page, and it's non controversial when we go to town meeting it's mm. it's, it's you know plenty of people had it. time to think about yeah. it and talk about sounds it sounds good i mean I, I for one would i don't understand the difference in, in like you say the pros and cons so yeah, yeah. So it, would be would, I, it would just be helpful, be helpful. For me, yeah because we went over this I with the i'm happy to share yeah. so okay. thank okay. you i'll make a note to um, do that great um I, I guess the only other thing i uh, from a selectman's comments that um, Heaven's Burn brought up. You know, we had the timeline for um, the uh, budget, budget season, yep. and so uh, kind of we need to send a message to um, the department heads if they yep. are going to keep with the November um, 10th deadline. So uh, I didn't know if you wanted um, to talk about that at the moment, but just sort of I was thinking level services because um, usually right now we would have a understanding of what's happening on the federal budget. But again, it's a continuing resolution. No one knows what's going to happen. Right. Or everyone is clueless about the federal budget. So or what's ultimately going to happen. So I guess the safest thing to say would be level services. Although um, I really like the idea Kip um, had brought up about creating a, a part-time economic um, coordinator planner person that mm -hmm. would work with uh, inspection offices, the um, planning board, the ZBA, the Conservation Commission, and also be a point person for, you know, businesses and stuff cause to grow our tax base. I mean, I really like that idea. So, I mean, that is a new initiative maybe that we can think about. Um, I think Wendy's behind that as well, right? Yeah. Well, that, the other I, day about I'm absorbing that interest, and I've been working on it. Because yeah. yeah. I mean, I just think it's a good thing. Like we, we really need to spend some more money on OPEB. So, I mean, I know there's Put a lot of controversy, <laughs> whether it's one million, you know, people don't want to know whether it's two million or whatever, but it's a lot of money and $20,000 is not enough. So we need to Great. put something more ahead. Um, Kevin and I, um, what turned up on the, when we were working on this uh, CIPC, um, you know, stuff for the committee, there, we have a lot of trees in the cemeteries. So I think a one shot deal I don't, I don't know. We have to get an estimate, but we really need to clean up some of the trees before they create um, more damage in the cemeteries. And um, Wendy, I think, had talked about separating the IT budget out. Again, we had put, we had merged the IT into each individual department, but the problem is nobody's making overall decisions. And I, mm -hmm. again, so there was a thought of having that. We don't have to make the decision. Yeah, I'm now. calling it right. a mini <laughs> capital plan yeah. for IT. Putting, so IT. putting that out, pulling yeah. it out separately, and then having somebody oversee it again. Um, and then the only other thing I could think of is, is, and I did put it on the agenda further on so we can talk about it then, but um, more and more of the money is coming through grants because there's just less money, so they want you to jump through hoops. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, now that we are really um, staffed up, Wendy can write grants, she can run grants, and she can monitor them, and she can report on grants very, I mean, that's what she does. She's really good. But I think we need to figure out how much time we really want her, or what, how we want her to structure her time looking for those grants. I mean, I feel like we can finally move ahead now that we are fully staffed. So setting aside a little bit of money for a match for grants mm -hmm. to have that was another thing and have you really be ag more aggressive yeah, yeah. yeah. Grants no just anything just anything i mean everything now is coming through what we need and could use uh, not, not anything that what they used to do is to give you more doing. money yeah. what they've done is cut back on your local aid but they do these grant programs and and basically what they do is they just hope 
if you jump through enough hoops that people drop out, and they do, but it's disproportionately little towns. So we are actually, if we decide to have Wendy kind of be more aggressive about grants, because now we have key, we, I think we can make out really well mm -hmm. because Wendy is very talented and she Absolutely. knows how to do this. She knows how to write the story. And we've done, over the years, a lot of groundwork for a lot of different kinds of grants, like the you know, complete streets and you know, the vulnerability grants that you're going to talk about later. But sometimes those need a small match. So I don't know if we want to put aside in our budget, this would be a new line item. And this is something we could talk to the Finance Committee. These are just things that we were sort of throwing out. Um, maybe we would want to put some money aside for, you know, a grant match so that we could take advantage and move on the grants as, as they came available. It's yeah. just one of those things, right. I, uh, some ideas. We need to look forward, so. But um, I wanted us to, we need to send some message to, or give some guidance to our department heads. and. The only thing I could think of at this point, because we have no other information, is you know give us a level service budget. Well, last <clears throat> last year, I, I spoke with the police department and the highway department, and and asked about you know reducing their budget by five percent, and both John and Kevin told me that that was very doable. But they all they both went up five percent, so. That's why I'm, I'm encouraged by getting them in early and find out you know, what happened with that whole thing. <laughs> well, you know, that's so. why I'd rather say level services versus, yep. I well, mean, because we can't really make a decision sure. on percentages until um, the personnel committee meets later this month um, and decides on the compensation schedule. Makes a recommendation. They to have to make a recommendation to us. We actually won't have that recommendation until uh, our last they're meeting, meet. our to, till our November meeting, yeah, actually. I think they're going to meet so again. So it'll just be you and I, but because um, Trevor's going to be out of town on the school committee stuff. But okay, so we have to, us. we'll get a recommendation, but that's awful close to the sure. November 10th date. Yep. yep. So that was kind of why I was thinking, okay, to the department heads, level services, and then when we get the input from the personnel committee, we can give them that and they can adjust. Okay. And then we can talk about it. I mean, this is not a starting point. The, the, I mean, this is just the start of the process. But usually, we give them some indication or some guidance. And if we're going to keep to this schedule, this is the only meeting that we have yeah. um, that will give them enough time to give a. Doesn't stop you from asking your questions. Yeah, and it doesn't stop you from throwing out any other ideas. This was just some of the things that I was thinking of, and you know, we just kind of need to be organized about it. Uh, because what happens is it, it all of a sudden it goes moves pretty fast. So I, I just yep. wanted you oh, to think good. about it. Yep. The okay. other thing I wanted to just look at, and I know that we, we will, but just kind of the legal uh, line item for, oh, for this okay. year. You know, kind of we se I think we se separated that out a little bit last year in different departments. The legal? And, I just expanded yeah. the categories that I, right. I notate, you know, where we're where standing it's in going. what areas. So, so. it would be interesting to see where that's at and make sure we're on target oh, yeah. for that, that and see if we need to. We so know which boards on. or, you know, what yeah. projects or exactly. yeah. yep. think problems about that. or initiatives okay. or whatever. Yep. So, so, so are you all okay with that? I'm, I'm okay. okay with that. Yep. All right. Well, then. That's a message did, to the finance committee. Yeah. yeah, message to the department heads and, um, you know, let the finance committee know that we're trying to stay to the schedule that we agreed to. Mm -hmm. um, I just was worried that, um, you know, it was going to the November 10th m date is coming up. We made that. That's an ambitious schedule. Yeah. Uh, good. From people who aren't here every day working on it. So. True. But, um, you know, I think it's good to have. Good goals. Right. So. Yes, yes, it is. But that's why I wanted us just to have mm -hmm. some And direction. we are, you know, from the people who are here every day working on it, um, um, particularly Brenda Hill, the town accountant, and our treasurer and collector's office. Um, we're, way, we're doing really well on schedule. We've got free cash certified. The auditors have um, done most of their work in one week. It's very... You know, uh, I know yeah. meeting an ambitious really well. schedule. Yep. It's good. So that is yeah. it is good. Okay. Um, is there anything else anyone wanted to bring up? Okay. okay. Board of Health comments. The only comment um, I have is that this is the last week of mosquito testing, and um, but they still are going to collect 
another couple of weeks and just sort the kind of mosquitoes. And then um, Vector Disease Control Inc. will have a final report for us. Great. And um, I'm still working um, on trying to put together this idea of the saline testing and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So we'll work on that. Did you get the letter for you to sign that we were talking about earlier? You know, you signed all the ones that are going oh, out. How about no, oh. no, I haven't. Did I, you want to? Oh, we were just, we're collecting um, next, well, this Friday is, no, next Friday, a week from this Friday. Um, the Reclamation Board is meeting and um, we'll hear if they vote positively on the Mosquito District. So we're collecting letters of intent. Um, you know, from different communities. So hopefully we'll have at least 15 communities on board. So that would be kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. And that would be one of the, actually one of the grants that Wendy would be working on would so be. So is this group going to be, get money from the state to operate? No, that just oh. says that we can have a mosquito district. We, we got, we got that $35,000 grant to put together a, a you know, the idea of a mosquito district and propose it to the reclamation board. And the reclamation board gave us support for going ahead because there was absolutely no monitoring or anything being done in the central Pioneer Valley here. So um, they, we got the grant for 35000 Wendy put it together. And um, so we hired Charlie and Greg, Charlie Konecki, mm -hmm. and um, Greg Lewis from the FERCOG to um, help form this district and get the idea of how this district is going to work, which is the voluntary contributions, which is a huge, you know, it's no, no mandatory payment. Everybody contributes voluntarily. And, we'll and so we go to the reclamation board. And see if they approve that model. And if they approve that model, which is kind of unique. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know, they seem to support it. Yeah. And, um, and nobody else would, no one would sign off for automatic. Right. Uh, Exactly. deductions from the cherry sheet you know that's that's it's from no the, that is from the 60s 50s and 60s so anyway um i'm really excited about this so hopefully they'll vote yes and if they vote yes um the next week the um governor's compact regional compact or uh, best Community practices time. grant process mm -hmm. opens up so we're hoping then to apply for implementation grant so um but, so you're saying if this mosquito district does fly with the 15 or so communities, no one community or none of the communities are going to be uh, pay whether it be an annual membership or dues or any fo form like that. It's uh, all on a voluntary. It's basis. a voluntary. No, you you are. We're hoping to have as many communities. Or we're hoping for 15. Then it's like sure. $4,500. You pay a base fee of $4,500, and everything else is elective. And what that gives you, it gives you the umbrella of the supervisor plus all the equipment. But the settle, you know, the implementation of the Mosquito District, we're hoping to grant so that our all our um, first year costs are going to be covered, which would be um, salary for the supervisor, equipment, lava siding, and all that kind of stuff. Ditch, ditch, ditch digging. We're going to have a lot of ditches to know. dig the first year if it's going to be under the grant. <laughs> but anyway, that's down the line. Um, so um, I guess that's the only thing that I had on that. Um, town administrator's report. Okay. Well, while we're on the topic of butts, um, we've had quite an infestation of stinging whatever. We, yes. I thought they were yellow jackets come to discover that wasps come with black and yellow jackets oh, okay. as well. So. We have do, been doing our best to uh, control that, but I, I mention it mostly because I just want people to be careful um, in. in the building. And they're they're pretty much dying out, but as you can see, there are many dead ones on the floor, and sometimes some crawling around. But I have not heard of anybody getting stung. But um, yeah. actually, though, I've been really worried about that. That's why I've been, I know. you know, killing them. I know. It's if they, it's, so we don't know, know why. We don't know why know. Uh, we've had an exterminator. That didn't really help. Um, yeah. And Kevin has done some sealing work. They've discovered some 
out there. So yeah. but it's just you know we think the cold so, weather, but so we have many. to. He knows we have to do some caulking outside. Yeah. So um, well, there's just so many. I, every the, time I come in, I'm I'm squishing. I know I've swept up one hundred thousand of them so yeah. far. So yeah. um, so we apologize to people. Uh, yes. But also just but just uh, be notice. careful. Heads up if you are at all allergic walking through our front door. Just be careful. So uh, just update on a few things. Um, the plowing uh, request for winter plowing is finally ready. We've come up with a new uh, contracting document, and uh, we actually had a mini ad in the recorder today. And um, Kevin is going to be um, managing that from here. But we have a single document for use by everybody, and people are going to actually propose rates. We're not telling them what the rate is. Great. And we'll go from there. We don't have to follow a full bid process on this. We don't have to pay prevailing wage rates for this. We used to be, you had to mm -hmm. um, at any uh, rate. Why so, was that, Wendy? Why, why, why has that changed? Um, I received a letter when I was inquiring about it. Uh, apparently, back in 1999, there was disparate uh, perspectives from two state agencies, and they made a ruling that they would exclude it. Just no plowing. Yeah, there was oh, a that's definition. Wonderful. I think it was labor and standards. I think we, we've been under the impression that you. Yes, I have been I mean, too. That but, was why we were. But that's paying. because I go back that far. Uh, when is that date on there? Okay, I think they're due. Uh, the 18th. Does it have a due date? Applications due October 30th. Okay. Okay. I think that's right. That sounds a little long. I was thinking we were going earlier, but that's maybe when we hope to sign. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I also um, finally got out the um, a request for coats on the finishing of the fence project at mm -hmm. the Sugar Loaf Cemetery. No. Um, so I, I heard back from one that they're interested in submitting. So are you um, talking? Is that the cemetery in the center of town here? Yeah. Yes. Yep. And it's just finishing what they were not able to finish with the money they had previously. This will be. Where I think we only have six thousand dollars to spend on it. Do you know where the where it's going to continue? I didn't. Or? I forget. It's it's a corner. It's where they. It was there was there was a tree that had to come down first before and, they could finish. it. And the highway department has to dig up cement yeah. underneath. They're prepared to do that too. To make this oh, good. finalize this, um, I had a department heads meeting yesterday. That was great, mm -hmm. and people have let me know they've, you know, said they were. We don't do that very often, yeah. and especially outlying people in other buildings. It's a good chance to hear what everybody's up to. And on that note, I think it would be useful to um, try to bring in departments just to talk off season, off budget season, yep. just to talk about what they're up to and not just we, come we, in. So we'd we like actually to actually have done that in the past and I think it's very productive cuz people forget too. um how much it really get, gets mm -hmm. done by per, per Oh yeah. Oh, I mean it's I great mean, to everything. Just have them <laughs> come in and discuss what they're working on and um, Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and um give them thanks. So two events uh, I know tomorrow I believe it's tomorrow that the senior center is having their spaghetti supper. Yes. yes it is. And that's I a fundraiser I think for Triad or is it Triad, Triad having the fundraiser for the senior center? I'm not really sure. But anyway, it's versa. all very worthy. Taking care of our seniors. So, yeah. um, and um, um, that you'll have this later tonight with the one day liquor license, but the library is concluding its uh, 100th year celebrations and events with um, a, a wine event. Great. I, I don't have the right, I don't have the flyer in front of me. That's coming up. Looks like um, on the 13th. The, I, I did not attend, but I've been in touch with the personnel board, and um, Trevor was at the meeting mm -hmm. uh, Monday. Um, and I've sort of said we really need to focus on the compensation plan, whatever it is going forward, in order to know what uh, the lion's share of our budgets are personnel. So, yep. um, so we don't get the town was yep. behind last year on that with, with that, you know, un unknown. Yep. So that and the personnel policy. Um, so they're working at that, at that and also um, examining, um, you know, employee evaluation uh, program. Yeah. Um, and they're meeting again. They usually meet monthly, but I guess they're meeting in two weeks. They to, are meeting in um, two weeks. Continue, you know, move this more quickly. Um, question? Okay. Um, several of us, uh, myself, I don't know. I think John Coderre is going from the assessor. I don't know if Karen is also going, but Brenda and Barbara and I are going to the annual Department of Revenue Municipal Law Seminar tomorrow. Um, and that's always very um, useful and helpful to us. Um, we are in the final steps. I'm hoping that within the next day or so we can make an offer uh, for the position of assistant town clerk. Uh, we had um, 
some good candidates, very yeah. good candidates. So yeah. that's good. It and have someone start very soon. Um, uh, Pat and Key and I had a, a lengthy meeting with Virtual Town Hall and Schools, the folks who uh, run okay. our website. We're revamping it. And um, oh, I've, thank I've goodness. mentioned um, they asked us before they can do a redesign for us. They wanted some additional photos. So Key's been taking pictures. And Great. Um, I put out the word to department heads, and then I sent an email out. I've gotten flooded today with everybody's taking some nice oh, pictures. Oh, that's wonderful. Of, Great. Beautiful that's time wonderful. of the year to do that. We're Beautiful. going to try to make it look nice but be content heavy so that it's a useful website. Right. People are, um, are, are need to be able to find things. I have trouble finding things on it, so I really want to make I, it useful. I know. I don't understand because we have the same – I mean, we pay for the same service and why ours is so – I mean, I don't understand what's going on. But um, thank you for doing that. Yeah. And um, it, it did come up in the SCEMS meeting to have a link to um, mm -hmm. SCEMS page. So It's not there? Okay. Apparently not. Yeah, I, I, I don't make a note for that. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. these links all need to be updated. Yep. We're, we were having some problems with um, different um, computers would pull up different things. I'd go to the same page and mine would look different from what she had. But different we had a long, con long meeting with um, higher up from the company and, you know, we're moving ahead. I don't know if you wanted to add anything. Yeah. He's a, one of the founding owners of the company, Bill Lesley. Right. Did, did he say any reason why I ours would, what, would rather what, not say. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um, <laughs> Um, well, the ball's in our court. Yeah. I'll just put it that way. Yep. You know, we, we can't blame them. Okay. Um, so coming up uh, Wednesday is the Hampshire County Insurance Trust meeting. We host that meeting. It happens when it happens. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's actually quarterly or more. It depends on what's going on. Can I ask you if you know who is Deerfield's representative on that board? Is it Barbara? Barbara is. Um, and I've been going, and I will continue to go, and I will be voting if we if there's a vote at this meeting because she will not be there um but there's been some conversation about whether we should move more towards having town administrators be representing um on, mm -hmm. the, on voting members um well because of the overview makes, that administrators i was just going to say it's the overview and, and and it's the impact on the budget because you handle the overview of the budget and i mean these are tremendous budget mm -hmm. impacts mm -hmm. and so um you know, cost shares and, and co-pays and those kind of things. I, I right. would feel more comfortable if... if Yeah, we were lucky to we have Barbara, who's very well, smart Mary and, and Barbara, Mary and Barbara have right. done a wonderful job. I don't mean that it's by any means. I just meant that... Right, but it becomes um, second and third hand information yeah. when I have to manage something relative to what we did recently with the 32B sure. vote. Um, by the way, on that matter, um, there wasn't, uh, not, some towns haven't voted, uh, some member units haven't voted, uh, different towns' attorneys uh, gave them different advice about how to go forward, and um, uh, now the teachers' union has taken a more active role in this. Um, so I'll keep you um, informed about what's going on with that, but my understanding is the weighted vote of the trust at the last meeting did um, decide to move forward with making changes in the basic Blue Cross plan that's offered. So um, yeah. we will know more and hear more about that on. It's a public but meeting. It, it's my understanding of that, too, that although the, the way the organiz organization is set up, that they do have the meetings and they do make these requests and votes and stuff like that. But if it doesn't, the cost is going to be substantial. Right. Well, it is. It, it, the vote mm -hmm. has I happened. Mean, right. So if they don't change it, we're looking at a 20 percent increase. 20%, you know, we're already paying, it was a million dollars, so it's, yeah. No, okay. I, I believe that's moving forward. Um, okay. People, it's just that uh, different people attend different meetings, and yeah. the consistency of information and questions is is up and down. Well, right. a $200,000 um, increase would be, it would be very noticeable in our budget, or to have huge so impact. I, I think so they've done a good job of looking at oh, how, to, how to, how yeah. to, Balance the impact mm -hmm. uh, with the be shared. with the employer yeah. and mm -hmm. the employees, and yeah. um, you know have more information after that. I mean, I'm happy to share whatever I have. I'm trying to get them to have more information. They, it's really nothing on the website, and I say you've got to put everything up there, yeah. just like we do. And right. we're going to get better at it. So I'm um, yeah. so I don't want to push too hard while we're not up to our speed with ours. So 
Um, just want to mention that also on, um, let's see, next week. Um, where is it this week? Um, soon. <laughs> I made a good connection with um, someone from Mass Development on the 17th, um, Julie Cowan, who happens to live very, very close to where I live. She's, Mass Development has gave a presentation um, at the last small town administrators meeting and the wealth of resources, both monetary and technical assistance for economic development is tremendous. So <coughs> I'm having her come out and just talk with me about the various projects that we've got, um, resources they've got, um, you're welcome to come and also do a walk around with her mm -hmm. looking at things. That's on the 17th at 1030. Um, so, um, oh, that's all I'll say for now. Everything else on here I can talk about as well if you need me to. That's on the agenda. Oh, oh, one other thing I did want to mention because I didn't have it on the agenda. There's nothing to sign as of yet, but we did get a $4,200 um, recycling grant. Um, d dividends grant has to do with our rate of recycling and other things, so that's good. And we can use it for a variety of purposes, and I'll get back to you, the, you on that. I just wanted, I mm -hmm. forgot to mention, but um, Wendy and I will be walking uh, Brian DeVries through the church um, on Friday morning at 9 just to kind of give him an, an overview of what that looks like and see if he's interested in putting together, you know. And he's an architect he's and an also architect. a select board member. And he is a select board member out of Heath. Mm -hmm. um, so we chatted about it. He said he'd just give his, you know, two cents free of charge, just kind of look it over, see what he thinks, and maybe want to be a part of an RFP at some point. Um, I have a Homeland Security meeting on the 17th, but um, so it looks like a relatively short agenda, so maybe I can swing by before you're completely done. Mm. I'm, I'm just of. gathering information, but I did want to let you know yeah. in case you did okay. want to join me. Or maybe, Kip, can you go? Do you know that if, are you booked that day? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Which day? Um, October 17th, 17th at 10.30. Yeah, I, I won't be able to. Okay, I'll, I'll try to, um, my meeting's at 9 a.m., so sometimes we're done, and, um, I can, and I'm just in Northampton, so I can come up. Okay, Wendy? Mm -hmm. I'll just meet her at least. I did want to mention one other thing. I'm sorry. Um, the mm -hmm. Bylaws ad, uh, Advisory Review Committee has been hard at work <laughs> and um, discovering a lot that a lot of people don't know about bylaws and town meeting votes and all of this stuff, and um, um, Bruce St. Peter's has been doing a lot of this research in the vaults and other places, and I've been working with him and talk, talking to um, people who know this work really well, um, attorneys and um, co colleagues who, who can help us along with this. We've got a lot of work to do right. on up, updating. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. I'm sorry you had to wait, um, but we have um, an appearance with the Fisher property on River Road, 61A, first right of refusal. If you'd like to come up. Come on up. Welcome. Thank you for coming. So maybe you could um, tell us where this is for um, people that are watching and what, what you would like us to do. Um, I can I can start. I'm Michael Fisher. Uh, the property is owned by my family. Um, I'm here with my attorney. Sorry. The property is about halfway between the Sunderland Bridge and the Deerfield River Bridge. The address is 555 River Road. It was originally known as the Haskell Farm. And uh, he named it the Fox Hill Farm. But uh, it was used by my parents as a summer home uh, up until, <coughs> excuse me, up until 2000. So today it's really not used at all except for farming. We lease the property uh, for farming activity. And because of that, we had placed certain acreage in Chapter 61A. And the property 
is both on the east side of River Road, bordering the Connecticut River, and on the west side of River Road. And all the land on the east side of River Road is in an agricultural preservation restriction since 1988. That will remain in an APR forever, and, uh, and uh, it's been in Chapter 61A for many, many years. The, and that's about 10.9 acres. So it's well within the, uh, the minimum requirement for Chapter 61A. We had also put 2.99 acres in Chapter 61A on the west side of River Road because that is basically the tillable land, according to the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture. Um, but we're in the process of transferring the APR land to a local farmer. And that's going to leave my family with 2.99 acres on the west side of River Road in Chapter 61A. And uh, that's below the five acre minimum. And to provide us with maximum flexibility in terms of dealing with that land, we would like to have the board vote to um, waive your right of first refusal under the Chapter 61A law. And um, we will then pay the rollback taxes required um, calculated by the assessor's office for the past five years. And um, the other point of fact is that my father, about 30 years ago, put all 34 acres that are west of River Road in a Chapter 61A tax lien. But we've only listed for over the past five years the 2.99 acres as qualified and um, appropriate for Chapter 61A. So that's we have to remove all 34 acres from the Chapter 61A lien um, and uh, pay the rollback taxes for the 2.99 acres, which we've had for many years listed as qualified for, uh, for Chapter 61A. So that's the gist. And I don't know if you've seen a motion or yeah. yes, for you to uh, vote to um, waive your right of first refusal, and that will remove that small acreage from Chapter 61A and uh, allow us to proceed with managing the property that's most appropriate. Okay, Trevor, do you wanna make a motion? Sure, uh, I move the, that the board vote to waive the right of first refusal pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 61A, Section 14 for 2.99 acres of a parcel of land on the westerly side of River Road, South Deerfield, as recorded in deed with the Franklin County Registry of Deeds in Book 3204, page 153, and Assessor's Map 159, Lot 15, and execute any documents necessary to effectuate, effectuate, effectuate the land and to direct all board members to execute the same. It says I'll the sale, sale, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'll second that. Um, is there any discussion? Would um, you have, do you have any questions, Kip? Yeah. Um, this, this is, is very interesting. This is the first that I saw of this. And, you know, as we move forward with looking to um, expand the sewer plant, one of the things mm. that we needed to do was to exchange land with land that's an APR about it. I don't right. know if this parcel of land being so small could achieve that. But this is something exactly what the what town you're... needs to keep their eyes on because if we exercise our right to take this land or buy this land, we could then keep it in 61A or APR or whatever as an exchange to get the land for the sewer treatment do you know plant. How much, do you know how much land we were talking about at the sewer treatment plant? Well, about an acre. Less about an acre? Yeah. So this would be about the perfect size. It would be. But uh, because it's I, usually you have to make at least a two to one. Switch. Right, and I, but I don't know, I, I don't know all the logistics of how that goes. But I, that was one of the things. So when I saw this, I was like, well, you know, this is something that we should keep our eyes on going forward. I agree with you. Yeah, we do need to figure out a way to kind of have room to to expand that sewer, and that is definitely the right spot to do it. Um, but um, and it would keep this land in. It's contiguous to other. APR um, land, mm. which is no, it's, huge. It's, it's not. Uh, yeah. It's not. A, this parcel is not under not APR. APR. 
No, 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 it's but a it's, a contigu it's contiguous to other APR land. Yeah. There's one thing what I'm a little confused about, you, the, the motion that you read referred to the 2.99 acres only. Mm -hmm. But as the Karen Bernard has pointed out, the original lien is for all 34 acres. So, so it, it, the... This is not what you last gave me. Yeah, it I is what I saw as, as what you I'm not, last gave. I'm not sure that that's what I last gave you. Is there any they, more paperwork Car on it? Karen indicated that the original lien that was filed by his father years and years ago mm -hmm. was for the entire parcel on, on right. the westerly side of the road, which was about 35 acres. Right. And when, you know, the, when they put the other piece into APR, uh, someone took pictures of what was really tillable land and it was not uh, the full parcel. Right. And since that time, whenever uh, Michael has, you know, they've inherited the property mm -hmm. with his brothers and they've filed the, AP, the uh, 61 um, paperwork every year and have shown it as the 2.99 acre parcel mm -hmm. as they've gone along. Um, and this is uh, something that they want to release from from the uh, chapter land. So what you're saying of 35 acres, this was on the westerly side right. of the road, and it was not put into the APR if program. No, it's no, correct. that's they correct. To, it was not put into the APR it. program. Can't. Only but the, the other, land on the easterly side of the correct. road okay. is on, in the APR. If, if we can't we can't vote on this um, tonight, then if it's not correct, because it's according to your motion, because. Um, it has, it has to be posted for to, you know. Well, that's it, how it, he here, has filed it in the last uh, uh, the last five years at least. It's been filed as a 2.99 uh, a lien. And I'm not sure the original lien that was filed by his father, which should have been probably uh, redone Fixed when it point. was inherited, but, never was. you know, that was never done with the town. I mean, they've filed the paperwork. They've been the subsequent owners. Um, but n the town never released and put anything new on. Uh, so what was the address again? 555 River Road. Here's what was sent over on October 2nd to the yeah. town administrator here with a copy to Karen. Um, move that the board vote to waive the right of first refusal pursuant to MGL C61A Chapter 14, a parcel of land on the westerly side of River Road South Deerfield, <clears throat> as recorded in a deed with the Franklin County Registry of Deeds in Book 3204, page 153, let's see. Assessor's Map 66, Lot 2. Oh, see, that's, that's different. Than Assessor's this. Map 66, okay. Lot 2 is 34 yeah. acres. Okay, so. And, and, and execute any documents necessary to effectuate the waiver and to direct town assessor to calculate the rollback taxes due to the town of Deerfield. Okay. And that will be for the 2.99 acres. I did correct it. I did correct it, and I didn't make it into my annotated notes, so that is the correct. So, and that's what was posted for the full? So, posted for what? Well, she's saying that you, had to be posted. Well, you have to have it posted. You have to have posted the exact property that you are. Posted where? We've it not should done be it. part of the meeting posting, the, the description no, of the. Right. I don't think there's anything on the agenda. No, it just that. says the address of the property, I think, doesn't it? No, name? it doesn't say the address. On the agenda. No, it just says um, River Road. Okay. Um, well, I'm not sure we're in a position to wait. already done the paperwork wait, uh, with the assessors. Wait longer think, time. Right. The assessors yeah. already calculated the rollback taxes, yeah. but yeah. Right. We're, we're not very much in a position so, to wait um, another month here. You are, but, or on you're the other not. Hand, we're not. Okay. But if it's done incorrectly, you can't do anything with it, and if you do, <laughs> you well, know. Right, but she's saying that it was done correctly, and she just did not annotate your notes properly. Oh, but yes, I just, I put the, you okay. know, I kept asking you. Okay. Yeah. you I've never had posted, any correct? town ask yeah. me. I've always That's submitted it and they filed themselves. So that's Well, because why this I was, was complicated, this was very complicated because yeah. of the yeah. very, I, don't, yeah. I wanted you to tell me exactly how you needed it sure. to be worded. So yes, that last wording, and if you would like, I can, you know, print that out and bring it to the board and we can revote that. But, but we haven't posted. typically posted um, we've done two already this year, and usually, well, yeah, they're supposed to be on the map. What 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 gets posted on the agenda? I, I, the the map 
of the property that you're pulling out. Has that been your experience with other? And now I've never had any. Uh, oh, no. I've never anyway, had any it's town doing Map 66, right. lot two. Okay. Right. And well, I do have. Let's that. just read. We'll let me, withdraw. Let me, uh, we can go vote to withdraw. Out. I'll print that out and carry on, and we'll be right yeah. back. I mean, well, it's up to you. We'll just we'll withdraw. Do you withdraw your motion? I, I move to withdraw my motion. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We'll reread it, and we can do the other one. Uh, if there's any problems, then. I guess you'll know about it. <laughs> okay. well, no, it's, it's 30. It, it's, a, it's removing, it's waiving your right of first refusal on lot two, map 66, which is 34 acres. Yeah, but usually. And, the, and the rollback the taxes point. will be paid on 2.99 acres. She's saying is that if, if it's not done properly, and say you sell it, then whoever you sell it to can come back on you and say, sure. You know, it wasn't done properly. You know, right, that, yeah. And whatever cost the there. They've expended. You'd be liable. So, well, what we, you know, when we were uh, originally submitting <coughs> the paperwork, we were basing it on the most recent filings. But then Karen rightly said, you know, it's we should go back to the original. Uh, and that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. We'll we'll do it that way. Great. Thank um, you. We have no intention of um, holding you up, but. Um, so you don't have time to come back for a second posting. I mean, just for your. Safety. Well, I, I think that we're, we're hoping that she, she's got it right. That from what you know, we, we went back and forth on this, and as I said, you know, this is it was an unusual request for me, and I right. I do this in a number of towns, so it was just surprised. Um, just saying, is what was on the agenda sure. doesn't have the map on it, so. And Kara's going to straighten that out for us. Wendy's. Oh, Wendy. She's not going to put it on the map, and it hasn't been posted. <laughs> so just so you know, it hasn't been on the on well, the what do you, what posted. What do you say should be posted? The, well, usually, it's a I, lot. No, I I, I I think that you know We've we done two this year, and they were not right. We submit them to the we submit them to the the four boards as required under the statute. Uh -huh. There's nothing that I've yeah. ever seen under the statute that says it has to be posted. It just has to be addressed by the four boards. Well, I mean, it's posted on the agenda, but the detail of what's described on the agenda, other than the name of the yeah, the, the, the address. general address, because it was, frankly, when it got on, it, there was a lot of confusion because it's been a confusing situation over years and property that was in didn't need to be, or I don't know. It's, 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 it's okay. Well, I'm trying it, to get it, that it, straight it, now. It, or it, the it, other it, way around. The, yeah. the motion there. is kind of true and it accurate and it's not accurate because the only it mentions six, six, map 66, lot two, does it not, or not? It now does. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it didn't before. It didn't before. <laughs> yeah, I kept getting corrected things, yeah, so. You can see what we're talking about. And that oh, was, yeah, that would be helpful. That's map 66. This is lot two. That's the APR. That's the east side. So and that's the looking, west side. And this is, this is what we're asking to waive the right of first I move the board vote to waive the right of first refusal pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 61A, Section 14, a parcel of land on the westerly side of River Road, South Deerfield, as recorded in a deed with the Franklin County Register of Deeds in Book 3204, page 153, and Assessor's Map 66, Lot 2, and execute any documents necessary to effectuate. Yes, mm -hmm. factually. <laughs> the waiver. <laughs> and to direct the town assessor to calculate all rollback taxes due to the town of Deerfield. I'll second that. So all those in favor? Um, Any I, other I just, discussion? Well, I just, so the total acreage here is the, the 2.99 plus the 34 acres? No. I mean, no. See, well, this I'm lot two. Confused. This I lot apologize two, for any oh, part I played lot in this, two but I, is, I was. Is you you okay. just pointed this out. Is, right yeah, lot two is the full 35 acres, 30, and 30, the 30, two point 34 acres, yeah. 34 and, uh, and See, the two 30, acres that are tillable are. The, the tillable acreage, the 2.99, mm -hmm. is sort of in there. In there. So are you asking us to pull out the full 
you, you were asking us to pull out the full lot two, though. The, the yes, whole, the all whole of lot two, because that's how the original filing was. Karen, okay, and uh, that is the total acreage of. Of this side. 30, yeah, you need to waive your right acres. of first refusal for all 34 acres. Okay. Karen has the records to know that the rollback taxes legally need to be calculated on the 2.99 acres that have been part of the annual application. Okay. All right. So the question was. But there's no definition of the 2.99 so acres. Paying normal taxes on the other 30 acres? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just. Yes. Yeah, all along they, we pay normal they, taxes. They, they the, and so that's what there's a household. Okay. There's a house shown there. Yes, the, yes, I see that. Okay, great. Helpful to see a map. Always. Yes. <laughs> Picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> it sure is. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate your so time. I'll follow sure. up with a letter. Thank you. And again, apologies, yeah. but Thank I'm, you. I'm, oh, it's I'm, a I'm glad to know every voice is <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah. I'll give us the key. Thank you very much. Thanks. At, at some Thank point, you. I plan to come back to the select board to get the name McClellan properly spelled on the signs from McClellan Farm Road. Oh. Because my middle name is McClellan, and I was the. What's the, pro the, what's the proper spelling? McClellan Farmer was my great 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 grandfather. Oh, okay. Yeah. With a, a D on or McClellan without a D? Farm Road. No, there's no D, and it should be McClellan, M C C L A L L E N, instead of McClellan. Ah. The original. So it's M C C L A L L E N. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Well, that's hard to say. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Thanks. night. Yep. Thank you. Well, uh, can I ask a question relative to what you were asking before? Would it be helpful to get some kind of big map in front mm -hmm. and look at that? To yes. Carry on the conversation. The, you as part of the posting, you're supposed to have the map that you're pulling out. Okay. Well. I know. I, I said, okay. I want the language you want. It's not want. our problem. Yeah. It's their lawyer. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's the, not our problem. Um, okay. But yes, know. to answer your question, Wendy, yes, that would be helpful so that we could kind of look at what, what's available and what might come up. And, well, because I, we are going to need, need to expand I need that area. need sort of definition from you, what you'd like. Or so you can also, if, you know. If, and I don't know. If you don't know the answer, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I will. If the town wants to exercise their right and take it, we only need to pay the value of the farmland. Is that correct? I don't know. Uh, okay. No, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Is it? But, right. But, but, uh, but generally, yes. I mean, you know, it will be a reduced amount. It's not, you're not buying the developmental rights. Right. There are, people have already been paid for that. And that's why there's been some issue. And that was one of the things that I kind of argued against our assessors going back because when you put the land in the APR program, it has a, a lower value. When you sell that, that's what you're supposed to get for that. You know, you're not supposed to, to make more money because they've already paid you for that. And I don't know. All well, the legal yeah, but it depends. It depends on what you, what kind of crops you, you know, you're oh, anticipating. No, I, I understand that. I mean, there's, as you know, it'd be different between potatoes and oh, right. corn yes. and hay. Yep. I mean, if it's hay, whatever. Right. It, it's there's a, there's a there's mm -hmm. different comp competition. No, you're right. Okay. But but it is still an agricultural. Um, well, my only my only thing is when you, I saw the acreage. You have a scale. You have a scale. Right, and my only when I first saw that, I instantly thought of the sewer. Yes, you know you and that before, and that was so. what we should <coughs> be looking. Good thing, yeah. Yeah. We, we what, might have them. We we actually have parcels. So what you need to do is look through some of our parcels that we could potentially go okay, to the because sure. it has to go through the legislature so we could approach Steve Kulik and say does I you have know to go through the legislature because you're you're transferring it's it, the legislature has approved the APR oh. and so you have to you're <coughs> you have to get legislative support so okay. that's why it's generally it has to look good in the sense that it's like a you can't swap for the exact acreage unless the acreage is like 
beautiful something, you know, sure. whatever reason. Um, it's critical, good yeah. environment, whatever. Right. But if you're taking a contiguous piece of the APR, then you need to have, you know, additional amount. That's why at least a two to one or a three to one. And then you have, what, what value does that bring? Um, and then why is it advantageous for us to do that? Obviously, providing sewer is important and um, economic development and all that kind of stuff. So you, you build your story. So you could look at some of the parcels okay. and see if we could build a story. Okay. Um, so next item on the agenda is the one-day liquor license for Tilton Fund. Um, they're having their um, end of the year celebration for their 100th anniversary um, on um, October 13th. I, I move to grant the one-day liquor license for Tilton Fund, Inc. for the period of um, October 12th, 2017 to October 14th, 2017. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, let's hope they have a beautiful night yes. and a really fun time and I'll encourage everyone to come. Um, letter of intent to MEMA for the hazards mitigation plan update funds. Um, do you want to just talk about that? Sure. A um, little bit, Wendy. Copy in front of you. Um, we are required to have an all hazards mitigation plan. Um, it's a big document. You worked hard on the one that currently exists. They last for five years. And we're already lining up for the update, which is um, the plan is good from 2014 to 2019. Mm -hmm. So this is a letter of intent. This is um, a FEMA, MEMA process. And we start with this letter of intent that drawn up. Um, we worked closely with FERCOG. They did the lion's share of the work with various committee members. And um, here's the document. Um, it was prepared before and various players, some who are still around and some who are not. Um, at any rate, um, we need to send a letter of intent and you, um, it's due before you meet again. So I worked last night to get this together. Um, and we, they were estimating that FERCOG estimates about $10,000 to um, do all this work to update the plan. Um, we need a 25% local match, but I've calculated that through in-kind staff time, and I don't think we'll need to come up with any cash to make that match. So if you approve this letter of intent, it's you know getting us in line to get the money to update our hazard plan. Um, the hazardous mitigation uh, plan is a requirement to, to receive any FEMA funding. So we have to do this, whether you want to or not. Just um, what happened last time is we actually completed it in plenty of time, but then it sat for two years to be approved. This is the reason why we're doing this so early, because mm. it sat in line in FEMA to be approved. It was approved by MEMA, and then it just went to FEMA, and it sat for almost two years. We no were actually lost. awarded uh, $780,000 of the Sandy mitigation money to do work on Little Meadow by our old Deerfield um, sewer treatment plant. And um, we actually had to give the money back because we couldn't go out to bid and um, implement and spend the money in the remaining months after they finally approved our plan. So I, we're starting early uh, so that we can get it to them to Approve should not be a big deal. It usually is about five or six meetings. Um, I have this will be my third hazardous mitigation plan that I've been involved with, so I certainly don't mind doing it. Okay. With that being said, I move to submit and sign a letter of intent to MEMA for funds to update the town's all hazard mitigation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. This is just a letter of intent. Um, there would have to be an application at some point. We'd get invited to go further in the process. You can see sort of, we sort of got a budget match. We sort of a budget. So, you, um, so it would actually not involve any cost, any money really coming out of the town. It's, um, it's us volunteering to do, um, Go to the meetings. Thank you. 
Well, I put myself on the hook for the lion's share of the work. <laughs> in this, so. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Thank you, Wendy. I know. I'm sorry that, but I mean, there's no other way around it. That's no all. Way to, no reason to apologize. It's a worthwhile exercise. No, because no, we were waiting to hear back from you, but it's not a problem. It's not. We are thrilled. She's been out for the last two days. So, but what? What's your? Oh well. Okay. Um, can we appoint her without being on the agenda? Because it's not business not anticipated. Right? I'm willing to take the public. Rini, <laughs> if you're volunteering, we're gonna um, we're appoint so, you. I'm so grateful. As under business. Um, not anticipated since um, Just a few seconds. So you were here. I swear to be a loyal citizen. <laughs> you, you will. You have to go you have to the town. To come and see Barbara. Okay. You have to be sworn in. But you know what? We'll jump down to that since you're here right now. Yes, why um, don't we? I, I just want to t thank Tim Fannin for being on the um, Franklin County Solid Waste um, District Management District for years and years and years, and also Karen Morrill, who was on the personnel board. Thank you so much for participating and sharing our town and I make a motion to um, Rini do you want us to say Rini Green or do, uh, well, how do you want us to Just appoint you what's your name for appointment well my legal name is Irene I, I prefer to be called Rini so I don't know what legalities yep. but I, Irene, Irene aka Irene. Rini I, I think we should say Irene Green okay that's fine. Uh, is that all right aka Rini thank you Rini <laughs> okay I make a motion to um, a uh, point um, Irene Green to the Solid Waste District. Second. Enthusiastically. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So Rini, I, you're on. Okay, so I need to be sworn in. You, during business you just come to the town clerk and they'll see Barbara. And, yep. and she will um, swear and you in. You heard the last of me so, yet, folks. <laughs> uh, so, so then you can then attend the meetings and vote for us right. now. With MA. Yeah. 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 Thank okay. you. Uh, uh, as long as you get sworn in, you can vote. Right. Okay, thank you very thank you much. Thank you for your service. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Rini. No, I mean, let me patch up your email. Yep. It's okay. No, that's okay. No problem. Thank you. That's okay. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great night. Um, next um, agenda item is a shared roadside mower agreement. Remember that? Yes. yes. <laughs> you know, Finally Wendy. today. So I was quickly wow. trying to get this ready for your meeting tonight. You've oh, already agreed gotcha. to do this. Um, this is just the agreement, um, which is the basic agreement the town has participated in as a non-lead town for years. Yep. Now we're the lead town, and it talks about insurance and things, how and these the go about sharing this. We've got a purchase order just late this afternoon from Wonderful. Eversource to go ahead and move things forward, so we will take possession of the mower. So, so we, this is... We were buying this motor, mower right. and being reimbursed through right. Eversource. Right, and, but we didn't. We didn't move forward because we wanted to make sure that they were, on we've sort still. of kept it on sure. hold. Right. And my understanding is I think Chuck today um, let the company know, yes, we're we want it because they, so they build. built it. It had to be built. So we actually have to vote to agree to this agreement, right? Uh, yeah, this agreement is simply the sh shared agreement among the other towns that are part of this uh, mm -hmm. sharing right. arrangement. Yep. So, and it just has a place for the chair to sign of each of the towns. So I'll need this and get it back to them mm -hmm. to bring it around to each. I move to authorize and sign an agreement with the, with several Franklin County towns for the sharing of the roadside mower. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? No. no. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I would like to thank Chuck and Wendy for all their work oh, uh, getting yes. this together. I know this has been... Like last minute. It's been a, a pleasure working with Chuck Willis. He's wonderful. To work. He's, yeah, he's, he's a wonderful really man. good guy. Okay. Um, MVP Grant, uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit, Wendy, about our meeting? Um, yeah, we're just recommending um, uh, that the town contract with um, Christopher Curtis. Chris is uh, just retired as the longtime senior planner at Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, he's been trained through the Municipal Vulnerability Program is, did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Multi, um, yeah. Okay, I've got so many acronyms. Preparedness. The yeah. MVP program, um, to be a facilitator for this, which is how they, the state has structured this, we have the um, $15,000 grant to do this, and that money is primarily for the facilitator to bring us through this project. This should 
complement the work that we'll hopefully undertake in a year from now when we hopefully get funding for the all hazards plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard from several individuals as well as FERCOG who are interested in being our facilitator. Um, Chris lives in town. He's been a longtime resident. Um, he's worked on these kind of projects. Um, and um, we'll continue to work with FERCOG and, and related pieces, but um, Carolyn and I both met with Chris to talk about how we'd proceed, and we have a good game plan going forward. So I, I was going to say, I, I was pretty impressed that I think we can compress it. We already have some meeting dates um, and a uh, game plan. And Great. So I think we can get this wrapped up pretty, you know, in a relatively short fashion. Yeah, so if, if you vote mm -hmm. for going forward, I'll have a... Uh, contract with him and Carolyn can sign that if you authorize that. No town funds are being used um, for this. This for the is grant, grant money. Yep. Yeah. I move to. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I move to authorize uh, the selection of and sign a contract with Christopher Curtis as the facility uh, facilitator for the grant funded municipal vulnerability preparedness uh, projects. I'll second the motion. All, any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I, I just want to state that the reason why this is a really good thing to do is it, it does give us like extra points for mm -hmm. cul like culvert replacement. Yeah, yep. it, yeah it, hopefully the end of it, we'll, we'll get certified as an MVP community and that has meaning for yep. the kinds of projects we need to get done to make us. Uh, Offline, I can just tell you what we were kind of planning. Perfect. What we want, I mean the project that we really want to attack on this and hopefully would get funded for would be you know, Richardson's Candy Kitchen culvert and that whole silted in area to our Mill Village culvert. Right. Um, it's been a long time issue. That will be kind of like several million dollars. So um, we're hoping that this will lead to that funding. So, Good. but it, it co would coordinate, we need to coordinate the state, DOT, um, DEP, um, land trusts, that has conservation restriction and Deerfield Academy and us. So it's it's a heavy lift, but I think we can do it and I think we can get the funding. So that's what we're doing. Great. Um, <coughs> Frontier bond request. Mm -hmm. um, this is a meeting on October 24th. I've actually had a couple concerns about how this was going to be um, managed with so many people and a you know, a pretty limited time of discussion. So I was hoping maybe you guys had some ideas of about grouping the kind of things together or having some kind of pre-work done so that we can facilitate a good discussion. I think Did you have any? This will be brought up tomorrow night at the oh, we have oh, a joint okay. school committee meeting. So okay. I hope to learn a little bit more about you know about the request and how they're maybe we can going have some forward, and then maybe on we can. On that. Did, yeah. you, did you maybe. look at the request? Yes. Uh, partially, yes. yeah. It's in your packet. It's right. And it's yes. right here. Small, unfortunately. I read it earlier, uh, but that's I why we're kind of. I, I was hoping we had some strategies. Well, I, you know, I, I have to be quite frank about this. I mean, talk about reading something that made my blood boil as a taxpayer. I mean, the dollar amount is crazy. I looked at that roof. The roof is fine. It's going to be fine for years. They're looking at $450,000. $15,000 to paint the gold posts and stuff. I mean, this list goes on and on. Talk about a waste of money. I mean, the burden on our taxpayers is crazy. And, you know, you always hear about, well, every time the school needs something, and it always gets down to, oh, you're poor kids. If we can't get this, we're going to cut the ban or cut this or cut that. Most of this stuff is, is, is crazy. I mean, it's, it's not even logical. Who spent $15,000 to paint two goalposts? Um, you know, I just. Well, I was hoping we could talk about this a little bit. I think, um, this, is, I think this whole list should be on our website. Let all the taxpayers see where they want to spend money. I mean, I just. Well, we'll keep. We, we, we're trying I to be, get it. I get it. But they're, I, they're, we're trying to be proactive. Yeah. We're trying to keep this positive and um, well, the other question I have and Wendy can answer this she's our new procurement officer when they come over don't they have to have three bids on all of these items um, I mean I don't know where it they depends come up with these I don't I don't know these yeah, are, I don't, um, 
I don't, I these don't are how they're going to pursue these, whether they're going to group them together or are, a lot of things are kind of separate. Um, but um, that depends on. The, well, I'm, yeah. what I'm concerned about whether they're bundling things. We have this things meeting on October 24, <clears throat> yeah. and and I'm 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 not questioning what you're saying, but I'm what I am saying is that we have this meeting on October 24th. If we went over this line item by line item and had the discussion that you're talking about sure. on line item by line item, like the cost of painting goalposts, mm -hmm. we would probably get done four or five line items in the evening. Okay, so what I'm uh, what I'm looking for is some kind of strategy and some ideas on how to handle this, and and, and we work with the schools to be productive. Okay, we, and 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 this so this is frontiers. It's yes, just frontier. Yes. It's just frontier. And they, and but, I, I wanted to know this. This all needs. To, um, we have a lot of questions to ask tomorrow night for sure, and then obviously on the twenty fourth. But where's tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow. School. Tomorrow night's school. There's Deerfield School Committee and Frontier School. And Frontier School Committee. So it's a joint school committee. So the yep. Frontier Joint and the Union yep. meets first, and then we break off into our own I later see. on. But yep. So I think this will be a topic tomorrow. Um, and then, or, or at least a topic about the, the meeting coming up with all the select so boards. So I was hoping to invite the school the committee members and the school administrators to your next meeting, which mm -hmm. is preceding the 24th. It's on the 18th. It's an mm -hmm. option. Yeah. So, I, I was curious. To, uh, well, I, I was thinking I mean, this who's was invited? This, who's invited this meeting? It's the finance it's boards, finance, and select and boards, select and, select select and committee, and school, school committee committees. members. So, I mean, even if, I mean, even if there's a few people that don't show up, you're still talking like 30 or 40 people. This is meeting. it's a big meeting, and it can get really bogged down. So I was hoping we had some kind of strategy. And some yeah, kind of so thought, perhaps thought process folks so that would be your meeting next right. Meeting. And so, if you could talk about that tomorrow night, mm -hmm. and then maybe we can work, work on some. some I mean, because as you know, it's not our meeting, so that somebody right. else is going to be that's running right. it. We're just going to have to that's participate right. but, in the discussion. But I am concerned that it won't be as productive uh, as as it as we hope it will be. Mike, so I'm hoping mm -hmm. that we can have some strategies, work together, be positive, and try I to come up with some way to have a real good discussion this was, about this. I think okay. this was put together as a wish list of items that kind of need to happen or are going to need to happen in the future. I don't know well, how much has to happen right now. I'm not sure why well, it's getting when I looked at this, uh, When I looked at this, I wasn't really looking at the numbers. I was looking at, well, Time. we need to prioritize some of this stuff. And right. we need to, you know, you're talking about, you, you know, you go through the list, it's jumping all over the place. So just from me, my thought process was, okay, we need to, we need to group certain things together, like security stuff together or whatever. Mm -hmm. Safety in general, and education stuff right, first. Right, safety stuff. But then it was like, well, let's have a prioritized list because, like you said, it could be a wish list, but how, how much of the stuff really needs to be done and how much... I mean, what Can, is life safety and, and, you know, I mean, I don't have any so problem these, with security, but I want to make well, sure some of this other stuff. And, and is, I like what Trevor said, but and it, and it's true. It's like all of this stuff just didn't, if you will, fall apart last weekend. No. So is this, how did this come apart? Has this been a list that's been developing over the last two years? Or did who said to whom in that well, school department, hey, you need to bring me a list of things what we need to get done? But that's where the prioritizing yeah, comes okay. in. And so right. I, 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 get I, it. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to do one thing, what would you do? Right. You know, or you're going to do two or three or four things. What are you going to do? The policy you know? question did, um, you know, we ask our elementary school, what's coming up on your radar in five years? Can you bring it to the CIPC board? And yeah. now Frontier does or does not have that ability because they've got to go to every town. Is that how that works? Or I didn't know if there's a. Um, do, do well, they, they normally have been paying for most most capital items come out of their operational budget. Correct. In for many, past. many years. Yes. Yep. And now I know they now have I, a time where they need to upgrade and do some things. And, and it's cumulative. That's understandable. It's, but it is. It's a cumulative. I mean, obviously, this list didn't happen overnight, my, so it's a cumulative. And my biggest concern is, um, is that if it could have been done piecemeal over several years it may not have had to have been such a large bond and then hence all the engineering and all the other stuff that kind of plays in because it's such a large amount now i know they're 
probably would be going after a municipal uh, building, school building grant. Which we know how that happens or not. Is it just town money, or are they? Or is there a matching grant for this? Or I'm not aware. We've suggested. I think I've told some of you this. Uh, the town administrator said there are a number of things, and we put them in touch with the green communities program that could possibly be green communities funded. Well, see, that's why but I you think would, this is a whole yeah, bunch of different yeah. things that don't fall under a school building project. Okay. I wasn't there sure There used to be a school, a green school building pro pro program. I don't know if it exists anymore. Um, but the general green communities program that we've utilized and the other towns have is available to schools as well. So there's quite a few of things that could possibly go um, under that. But so there are many steps you have to take before you can actually go after correct. the funding. When this first started coming up with you looking at the roof and then some AC and stuff like that, they were saying, well, if we put it all together, then we can apply for, it had to be a certain number, and then we had, they could apply to the, is it the Massachusetts School, school Building Mass School Building Authority kind of thing. So that's why I wasn't sure where this was going. Did it have to get put in so large, or did it have to, like, I know, I understand that certain things need to be done, right, and I get that. I, so. I think, I, I guess, from my point of view, and, and maybe, you know, Carol and Trevor a little bit, if you sat in some of those foolish meetings at the elementary school for shingling that roof, you would think this community would learn its lesson about what the state does for us. They do nothing but take our money. They didn't help us at all. Nobody helped us. All we did was pay a lot of people who do not live in Deerfield hundreds of thousands of dollars to make the whole job miserable. As a matter of fact, I don't even think we've gotten all the money from the school uh, building authority anyways. It's over a year the roof's been done. They have to audit it. <laughs> you have to audit it. Yeah. So the roof's fine, you know, but it's the paperwork. That's what I'm saying. That's, right. what, that's what I was concerned and, and with. And uh, we're supposed to be a, a green so community. Well. You know, I bet the paper from that job will go to the ceiling. <laughs> I mean, the, you saw the stack of documents. The books themselves were almost five feet tall. So I, I was there with you. I know. I agree with Carolyn. Maybe maybe there is a way to kind of get together and talk. I mean, I'll, I'll learn more tomorrow well, night. But yeah. can we can we group out what safety? Sure. You know, obviously, if well, kids are tripping on stairs going up because of Linoleum's well, popping off and priorities. Yeah, priorities. And but also, if this was framed so that you could get school funding, mm -hmm. well, let's step back a minute because, like Kip says, you know there is a huge amount of cost. Yes, they're going to pay, you know, whatever, forty or fifty percent, right. but that means a job costs twice as much. Right. Whereas huh. if we could get funding through the green communities, it would actually bottom line would be cheaper. Could be. Yeah. Could be cheaper. So, so those are questions so we to just, ask. And so I'd like to know the. The funding source, you know, too. You, not, mm -hmm. not only right. priorities, but yeah, funding, funding sources. sources. And a big thing to really consider, because, you know, our town hall has always been, you know, stretched to limits. That school roof, regardless of the money we paid for the mission, look at how taxing it was on the building department, on, you know, the town administrator, the town yeah, accountant, town. Know. you know, on the select board. It still is. I, I mean, it still <laughs> is. And, I mean, these are costs that aren't you don't see, but... You know, the taxpayers still pay for this, and it's frustrating. We all work yeah, hard to get money back. Are you saying you don't want to see me every morning, <laughs> every week? Every week? Oh, I, I, I mean, on a regular basis, you know? <laughs> you know, it's... I don't think it's and, and the thing is, it's... I don't know. Some I, of the... It, it, to me, it's just... So much of the stuff is foolish, because, like, those meetings that we went to, we talked about the same whole thing. It was like... Now, this is not what happened, but it's like, Dan, did you bring your coffee this morning? Yes. Jim, did you bring your hat? Yes. Oh, does the dumpster still there? Yeah. You know, the same thing over every week for what, 14 weeks. It's, you know, it's like, really? You know, we're all grown people, and, you know, but we, I don't know. It was foolish. Deerfield would be paying over $200,000 a year for... Ten years. Yeah, and and and, and then. Uh, sir, but that's sir, why, depending on which way why, it goes. But that's why I was thinking it, it might be che if this was put together to go through the school program, it might be cheaper for us all mm -hmm. if we went through the green communities program because that actually is a true grant, and then we fund it ourselves. Yeah, and because I'm not whatever. sure. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think. You know what I'm but anyways, it's gonna, to I think it's going to be an interesting yeah, conversation. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll learn can more. You, yeah. Can which you think great. about some strategies, please? I, I think it would be good to, if this were okay. um, bigger. No. I'll, I'll <laughs> no, yes, just bigger. organized by, more organized by um, category mm -hmm. and funding source. But I, I, 
I could well, be wrong, but I do think they're strictly looking at um, local pay. Local, so. local funds, oh, right? Because I don't see anywhere where it's broken out. Um, other than so, different ways to do the bond. You no, know, it seems to be mostly by uh, expense and downward. Right. So. But okay. uh, do, would you like me to invite them to your, be, uh, your next Well, agenda, how productive or? would that be? Can it, is this something that Trevor can bring forward that we're concerned? I mean, I would just like well, it to be, I mean, I've gone to enough meetings when you have 30 or 40 people. Well, and if you, you invite you them bogged down to your meeting, then you would, would just not. have you as opposed, as a prereq, as a precursor to the meeting on the but 24th. But that sort of undercuts what the group I, discussion would be. What, what I want to do is make sure we have an efficient, effective group discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to have priorities. You have to have, mm -hmm. you know, some discussion, some information about this. I mean, I'm not Kip, certain, but I Kip, think the other towns Kip. may be having them come to their meetings. Oh, so really? Okay. Let me scope that out. If so, would you? Well, and, and also because then Trevor can find out about that tomorrow as well. But, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, it, Maybe when they say painting the goalpost for 15000 is actually doing something different. Well, it says replace or paint, so I'm, yeah, I, you need to get I behind mean, we need we need a little bit more information. I, to me. Well, if they're going to replace them, I think new goalposts come painted, but I could be I wrong. I keep thinking you're saying gold posts. Gold posts. <laughs> there, for I gave 15, you a line, Kip. <laughs> gold posts. No, but what I'm saying, there's no, there's, it's great that they have information here, but it's not enough information. Mm -hmm. So we would be get bogged down because you're going line on them by line on them, and with 30 or 40 people, and and Kip right here, we're having a discussion of just one line item already. There's dissension, so mm -hmm. you can imagine well, that we wouldn't get very far. The right? other, you mean, just part of the other issue is that we're struggling as a. I'm just thinking of the elementary school. We're struggling year by year to replace one classroom of carpet that's been moldy for five years because of the roof leaking, you know, and when we, if the town approves this, it, it, it's done like that. I mean, I know they get it all done. I, I, I'm not, I don't mean to minimize that it may need to be done. It's just that well, that's, that's a lot hard. being done really fast when we're, as a town in our school, are waiting and patiently waiting to kind of do a couple of items at a time. And, yeah, that, and if you want to look at it another way. It's a 20-year capital plan, actually. Right, right. Well, and so maybe that's what it needs to be broken out, is every year you get okay. a tenth of this. Or And, and maybe, maybe, that's, can, maybe that is the case. And maybe know? that's and what so, they're looking to do. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. We'll, but we'll it's just, it, it's everything in this community can be like that. I mean, you know, we struggle to come up with a, a, a viable economical solution to our sewer plant. It'd be real easy to just get this guy in here and say, Go ahead, fix it. Thirty million dollars. Go for it. All right, you know, you're going to pay for it. Bond over bond it. It's not prudent. It's not a smart right. thing to do. You need to take time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But you can see where I was. Yeah. 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 So I you agree. Get, you so get what I get saying. the gist. I'll, I'll I, make this it is clear. not a negative on one no, or no. the other. It's just, it's just how do we a have strategy a strategy session to figure out how, how we're going to have a good meeting, how we can help them, and how they can help us. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh, work priorities is the next item. Um, I, my concern is that, you know, government now, like I said in the past, is grants by grants now almost. All the money is coming through grants. And part of the thing is they, you jump through hoops and they hope people fall out and don't participate because so, you have more, less resources. We have Wendy. Now with Key here, we have Wendy available. And I just want to make sure reinforce our um, priorities. We have the sewer treatment plant we have to work on. So um, if there's anything that we can do with the sewer treatment plant, I mean, people have to be able to flush the toilets. And Very we have important. this huge price tag ho ho holding over our heads. So it's anything to do with sewer treatment. We have, um, we want the church, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we have to sort out what we're doing with our seniors and moving them over to the church once the church comes. Um, we need to look at senior housing. I mean, I seriously, we, we need to reach out to the housing authority again because we have a new director that I think I, I met with her and she seems to be really um, gun ho and maybe will help us mm -hmm. when we figure out the, nice. for the, the current senior center. Um, we've been we're trying to work on that for... At I'd least like to 20 years. The complete streets. You just saw yep. that Sunderland. And the complete streets. Yep. Did a wonderful nice we've we've done a lot of these grants take 
um, a lot of uh, groundwork and we've jumped through lots of hoops for the complete streets. And I think there's a couple more things under the new program we have to do, right? Yes. What you did before was not the complete street. It was called that. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a title. You were ahead of the curve when you did that a few years ago. Now there's an actual program. That was just what so, you so, called your HUD initiative. Okay. So, All right. So, so can we do that kind of stuff? Is well, there, that's why I, want, I, I support having an economics development. Plan. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are the big projects. Well, I'd like to do something pretty some, sometimes instead of only just do what stuff that nobody sees like the dumb culverts. I mean, we have to do culverts to protect our roads and mm -hmm. keep our roads open, but it sure would be nice to do something downtown and mm -hmm. make... We'd like to do everything. Pretty, And I'm so. serious. It would be... Yes. I'm up for it. Yeah, okay. Until good. I but say I, mean, I so, can't. I mean, are you sort of agreeing <laughs> with this list so far? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, am. I, I just... The only thing that I, I, I hear... I'm not picking on you. I hear it from you a lot is the senior housing and sprucing up the downtown. The town doesn't own the downtown. It's taxpayers. And well, until I'm, we I'm, can come up with a solution on how to help those businesses and property owners, and, it, it, and it's, it's a slippery slope because you could have someone that has a business on the other side of the town and says, hey, if you're going to give a break to the guy on the center of town, you should give me a break. But on the other hand, what is incentive is it for anyone to improve their building to make it look better when the only benefit, or it's not even going to be a benefit to them, they're going to get a bill, they're going to get a fine, and it's, uh, in the sense that their taxes are going to go up. So, you know, well, they look at it and say, we, I can't we, gain we, any more income from it, so... Well, except I wasn't talking, I mean, that you're talking about block grant stuff like Greenfield gets, well, and that's, no, that's... I was talking individual buildings. Okay, you know, if you want I was to talking about like the street, like sidewalks. the actual right. sidewalks, sidewalks and oh, streets. Those, yeah. those are the kind of things that yeah. we, okay. we and, own and, make, and we can do. Make it a more inviting place for people to want to maybe move their business from the other side of town to downtown and... You know, right, and mm -hmm. just make it a little Clean bit pretty. Increase the, increase the customer base for the yeah. Yeah. business exactly. I mean, that are there. What you want to do is have more walkability, and, mm -hmm. and, and you want to encourage people to do local. I mean, if you're going to go out to eat, you should go to, you know, Holiday Pizza and Jerry's right. or Wolfie's and, know. and, and, and really, All the you know. Gianni Fix. Gianni Fix. Who's yeah. doing incredible business. Apparently. Great. I mean, it's so exciting. So you want people to feel right. social and walk, you know, want to walk downtown. So we can do a lot, you know. What you're talking about is the block right. grants that well, come with low-income stuff that we don't qualify. Unfortunately, we I don't qualify for. I, what I hear you saying is that you know improving the buildings will just raise the property mm. values and right. their taxes will go up. I think that's just one part of, of it, it is. It is. the benefit, and, or, say, or, or not the benefit part of the benefit. But and anyway. it's not. It's nothing that the board of selectmen can do. And I know over the years there's been numerous business associations, but. You know, one of the reasons that, uh, you know, Northampton works well, it's not only because there's a lot more people, but if you go down there on a Thursday and Friday night, everything's open, right. you know. And if you go into downtown Deerfield, you know, there might be a restaurant here or there might be a convenience store there, but not everything is open. So you don't get, you know, um, that large group shopping of people. shopping after because, dinner. Because, you know, the people who go downtown Northampton, they might go down there to eat, but they want to stop at Sweeties, and then they're going to go look at the card shop, and then they might walk through Thorns Market for, you know, goat soap or whatever, <laughs> you know. Correct. And, and, and all, each one of those businesses attract a handful of yep. customers, but there's so many businesses that a handful of customers is huge, and that's... Something but, that but, if we, feel. But, but if we try to do that, that's, we can start it. That's where well, I you think can, the it's town synergy. Needs, it's the, synergy, Kip. Yeah. So if town, we start, the town needs a feel. Yeah. And you know, we, we have this wonderful Yankee Candle. We have Old Deerfield. Not, we can't duplicate that, but we can kind of. Well, we can model our town. Cumberland a Farms bit on is going to be vision. starting pretty soon. Yeah. And so, why don't we try to get you know, moving on. Well, that, that, that's going to help. And, and I, when I first heard about that, I thought, you know, for me, for the last 30 years, I mean, even in the middle of the night, and I say middle of the night for me is midnight, you know, <laughs> and it's a blizzard snowstorm and I'm coming back from snow plowing. Cumberland Farms was the bright lights. It was like yep. the glow of the town. That's going to be gone. 
Yep. And that's going to be, a, that I think, is going to be a huge impact. You know, we're going to have to draw fall asleep. Stuff. We're gonna so you're going to have to, you know, we're going to yep. have to hope that other business goes in there and other businesses open up to, to you know what I'm saying? Yeah, keep the light up. There's always that little bit of activity going on. But I think that's why it's important to do a little something to yeah. start. Down, down the, get, yeah. get those sidewalks coming so down, people the nice will lamp walk. post yeah. so people will see. People oh. are always out walking. So if oh, you yeah. have, yeah. if you do a little things to make it right. safer, which is a good thing. I think and, we should. And do more, so it's more social and walkable, then people, it, it will well, encourage more businesses. Yeah. So, I mean, and, it's, and if we do this part-time planner person, maybe they can draw in some of those the businesses. Yeah. yeah. So, yep. I, Get those I mean, ideas. I'm gonna I just, start this working is on that just big stuff. to yeah. have the gift shop is about to open. I'm sorry, we forget the name oh. uh, on that? Sugarloaf Street. Um, Great. Is it I mean, not Daylily? Daylily? Uh, Next it, to the Daylily? Daylily, it's in part of that. Oh, cool. Um, what do you know? That's awesome. And Johnny Fig will be um, now, I think, has another partner, will be coming for a full liquor license Wonderful. good um um berkshire brewery does want to have a i don't know which a pub or whatever and Perfect. and the legislation has moved along to allow that they'll be coming right. forward so there are things happening yeah, right. yeah. I think inside it's it's something they're creating within oh, their okay. building to not a keep, separate i want to get them up yes on the road yeah i've <laughs> had yeah, that but conversation see, but if you have to have you need a connector to the yep. streets so and we have the leary lot so yep. you can do a connector. and we've had some conversations and we about have that. you know yeah. we need to do this kind of stuff right. so yep. this bigger if you stuff. I'm, could, I'm all on board with that stuff okay I think so, you, so I think you're the town okay with is, this is on board as well. i mean yeah. it has not, nothing is jarred you right nothing's what jarred Jar you in the list that i just listed oh, off? no no oh, i agree okay. with all of it i'm just saying that not that I don't want to put any time into it. That's why I earlier mentioned that there's been a lot of business associations, and they, they kind of you know they kind of you know, well. But I'm just away. I'm just um, talking about we have the capacity in Wendy, but I wanted to make sure that you guys were on board. With, this is the whole with reason I ran to do this stuff. I mean, we were hustling money. We hustle. Yeah. I hustle money oh, every single meeting. You oh, know that, yep. but. It's becoming more complicated. You just you yeah. you actually have to put a lot of effort into to these things now, and you have to weigh a lot of groundwork. And so, if we want Wendy to do this, we, I just want to make I'm sure. I'm on board. I mean, it's okay. the whole reason okay. I ran is to kind of start developing okay. downtown Perfect. and Perfect. helping our businesses and getting growth. Well, it's just if if you growth hadn't been around time. as long as I've been around, you <laughs> you would you would honestly see. I mean, you wouldn't think too much of it, but honestly, there has been a real squeeze in the money. Of course, and oh, sure. and, and, and this less is money all the time. And this is and a, the how they cut people out, more. right? Yep. Exactly. So, but we are. I mean, we're not going to be at that disadvantage. If, but I wanted to make sure you were okay. Oh no, okay, good. All right. Two sure. related items that I've yep. talked about before, and Trevor's been very involved. Well, Kyle actually did the walk around with Jessica Atwood from FERCOG. I, mm -hmm. I I don't know what's going on. I did ask last. I knew she was going to interview um, about six or seven key people, um, business owners and others, um, for some feedback. And I, I'm no, going to brought again what's going on. So we move forward in that process. Yep. She did say, and I think I did say this at an earlier meeting, that we had a very high rate of occupancy and there are a lot more buildings and businesses than meets the eye because there are back alley and yep. businesses going on. Legitimately, no problem. Um, but most of them are service businesses that are a direct, they're not tourist attraction type right, businesses, right. which is fine. It's great that the community can meet its, many of its own needs. Um, but at any rate, just an observation about yeah. that. I so. think um, we have to, in a couple of weeks, we have a, um, the economic um, development district that I sit on for the FERCOG, and then the SEEDS, the Compass, um, Comprehensive Economic Development strategy. strategy. I sit on that, and we have a meeting in a couple of weeks with Jessica, and now and that is rolled in. Her what she did here is going to be rolled into the plan, and then the plan is okay. well, we funded just, we just by the state. And I'm so trying to find out where we're at. I will. So would yeah. you yeah. check in? We'll yeah, I will check and make sure because part of it is. I want to make sure that we are in part And the other it. project that we had talked about was the Conway School of Landscape Design, and we talked about some kind of landscaping for the buildings that are connected there on North Main Street, um, our municipal buildings. And I haven't heard from them. They kind of dropped the ball. Okay. Um, but 
I'll let you know when I do. Sounds Landscaping, good. Landscaping, you mean Just some kind of, yeah, um, <clears throat> just a design project, a student design project. Um, the library is quite interested. They didn't, that isn't part of what they did with their design for the building that they're going forward with. So it's really just sort of something to look at, to imagine. And, uh, I, and kind of where I was going with some of this was to, and, and maybe that would tie in, is that our town needs to have a uh, anchor feel and an anchor design. And a, I mean, it, I'm not saying it, you know, you go into some towns, you go to Stowe, Vermont, McDonald's has to look like a, a back ski shed or something. But I don't mean that. But I mean, that there, if there is a, you know, I go to a lot of towns across Western Mass and they, you know, each one has a certain feel to it. And they've designed in a certain way that it has, um, you know, we have such a history here. Um, and if we can kind of tap into that architecture, yep. that history, the, the, I mean, just, I mean, just think of how old we are and, well, you know, if we can tie in our, you know, just historical signs and different things happen here and there, it gives people something to have interest and look at when they're walking through town. Or if we even made a, you know, made a, um, a walking park or a tie in when we have all the, all the properties together. If we, you know, we have some place where people walk their dogs at night and watch the game and have a pavilion. So we have outdoor concerts, that kind of thing. I just think It'd be nice to kind of get a bigger vision in town. And I know that's a lot of pie in the sky theory, but you have to have some sort of vision for your town going forward. You can't just kind of limp along all the time. So well, I've thought about that a lot too. And, <clears throat> you know, South Deerfield Center is not old Deerfield Center. Correct. Never can and be. And even though there's some very, you know, monumental historical sections of our, you know, center of town, it's still not the same. Right. Um, what this town's history is, it's always been a farming community. Correct. So I was thinking at one point, you know, so mm -hmm. well, you know, how about if we spruce, you know, if you uh, promote more farming, like yeah. uh, farmers markets and stuff like that. But you know, you go just outside the center, and all our local farmers have their own center, and they have all they of this. Do. So even if you got them all together to come downtown, there's no place for a lot of people to come to park, anyways. Correct. So it would be way too congested, and I yeah. think. If we did, say we had a, I don't know, a festival in the fall time where we yep. close down Park Street and we got vendors to set up, it would create such a chaos that the majority of people who live downtown would hate it, you know? <laughs> there would be no real benefit to it. Yeah. You know, the, the businesses that are there, you know, might not benefit from all the crowds because they're there for a specific thing, you know? Yep. And, you know, so it's... Yeah, we need some brainstorming and some yeah, thoughts of how, how to kind of, yeah, it is, it is tough. It, you don't it have it's this more gigantic, you, you go to some places, um, Westminster, or just uh, different areas, they have these gigantic greens. You know, you go to downtown oh, yeah. and, you know, West Brookfield or something, a massive yeah. green, and you can do anything on it. And right. our town just wasn't mm -hmm. designed no. like that. Well, like, you know, it might be interesting, CESA's operations are across the street, they yeah. own that building, to have them come in and talk with us. What, yeah. what do you think would work here? and yep. address those concerns yep. of, um, you know, I know a lot of places have farmer's markets and they have the same complaints, but they're successful anyway. Yep. Um, so, but, we, you know, they might have some farmers, We had that. thought about farmer's market. Get that but, agriculture um, commission going The rotation again. is, I mean, most farmers don't want to come here because there's surrounding farms. Sure. I mean, yep. uh, farmer's markets already that yeah, they go to. Exactly. Yeah, with the yeah, kind of thing. It. Yeah. So Speaking can, of that, there's a, a lot promote, of produce at the senior center though, if anybody wants some. So. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. So good discussion. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, who, um, to get our discount, we need to register for the um, MMA. It's coming up. By you, when? Um, oh, is that that Boston thing again? Yes. Oh, yeah. um, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to go, but I, so I didn't know if you wanted to go. I want to go really bad. I just don't know if I can okay. walk by that. But, but so. that's all right. So why don't we sign me up to make sure that we get my discount and then wait and see how you are. And Kip, if you don't want to go, that's fine. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happens. but We'll take care of that. Um, next item on the agenda is um, we want to appoint Cyn uh, Cynthia True to the personnel board for yep. a term ending June 30th, 2020. Um, I attended, she, I, just to oh. jump in, I attended the personnel uh, board meeting on Monday night and um, very nice woman. I got a chance to uh, to meet her and uh, she partook in the meeting and kind of see what it was about, see if she'd like to, 
you know, continue on. And um, she's an amazing amount of experience. There's a bee on your book. <laughs> Um, now it's in your drink. <laughs> she, um, she's worked for Eversource yes. for uh, many, many years and uh, uh, a lot least of history. A couple de decades in, in <laughs> personnel. So. Amazing, amazing she's uh, very actually, nice person um, and, and said she would love to be involved. So uh, <laughs> Yeah, I met with her too. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, good. And she has, um, actually we had she a, came in a, 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 uh, a, a, 30 years of, she just retired after 30 years in HR. Did you say this already? I was thinking yeah, about, just, well, I, just I was thinking about, I wasn't going to say 30 so years, I got because that, years. Uh, yeah, uh, 30 years sounds, <laughs> but she, she has 30 she years of, ex she was 10. Yeah. yeah, she has 30 years of experience, um, working with HR with Eversource and, um, she's truly well qualified. Oh, I, I offered great ideas and uh, I was excited, I think, to be involved. So, um, so, uh, I would make a motion to we can stamp this, appoint Cynthia good. True to the personnel board uh, for the term beginning October 4th, 2017 and ending June 30th, 2020. Um, I'll second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Cindy, for doing that. I yes, really appreciate thank you so much. it. She'll really be a um, wonderful Great asset. asset. Yep. Um, Bernie Sadowski, uh, uh, it is um, moving from alternate to full position, so I would make a on sure. the ZBA. I'll make a, I'll make um, a motion to appoint uh, Bernard Sadowski uh, for uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, for a term beginning October 4th, 2017, and ending June 30th, 2019. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, and thank you, Bernie, for stepping yes. up to the plate. Um, to take Ron behind this and, place. And also just to make a, um, an announcement that um, we're also looking for another person that would like um, to sit on the board for the, uh, the personnel board. So if anyone out there is interested. Um, to reapply. Uh, to reapply. And, and zoning. And, and zoning. zoning. And zoning. Um, we have, I'm sure there's other boards, but um, certainly a great, great group of people on the personnel board and would love to have you. Thank you. Come help. Um, so uh, we have an upcoming select board uh, meeting on October 18th, and um, we are moving the select board meeting back to November 1st. So it's October 18th and November 1st. They're two Wednesday meetings. We had originally scheduled November 2nd, but Trevor's not going to be here anyway. So either day, yep. either day. So we're, we decided to move it back to the first. So it'll be this 18th and the first. And then the 24th um, at the Media Center at Frontier. Okay. Yep. Thank okay. you. Um, I've got a couple things. Oh, One sure. small announcements. Sure. Um, um, the two town tax sale day oh. is October 7th. Yes. Thank and you. we've been, I don't know how many people have come in, but quite a few is and there? today um, who are signing oh, up to good. do that. Are there fees for that? And um, that so mention that. And also a couple of folks came in from the one of the local churches to um, ask to use the town common uh, for um, an observance of the 100th anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima. Um, and that I think is on October 14th. I asked them to just check, let the police department know. They, only, they expect yep, about 20 that's, people or that's, so. That's fine. Um, and I, I just want to remind people that um, there is a flu. You can get your flu shot. Um, at the elementary school, October 14th, which is a Saturday, mm -hmm. from 10 to 1. Please come. Yeah, please come. I'm sorry, the meeting at Frontier, what time was it? Uh, 6, 6 p.m. at okay. the Media Center. Okay, thank you. I, I just, if you can 24. talk to them about it. Yes. And I'm, I'm unclear whether you want me to ask them to be on the agenda. Do you want me, if they, um, the think, other towns I are doing think, that? Um, you need to talk to Trevor after. Or, you, as you okay. said, if you and check you with guys, other towns, if they're. And you guys, um, and then you can check with other towns, and then you guys um, okay. make a decision, okay? Sure. I, I, I trust that you know what yeah, you're concerned I know what about. You, yep, absolutely. We just want a, a really good meeting, but I don't also want to undercut the other towns. Right. But if other towns are. Uh, are having people come then we would want them to come too oh I, i'm not it's not stand. clear to me that yeah, that's that is in fact happening have you heard i have I not okay i have not I um, know for sure. um so i'll entertain a motion to adjourn i make a motion to adjourn i second all those in favor aye, aye. have a good night great. everybody yeah. um <laughs>